yes, uh, Dave Fellow is um, CTO at the Green Button. I've uh, been working at the company for a couple of years now and uh, grown from a, a fairly small company, about three people when I started, to about 20 people full time now. So, nice. And you're based, in based in Wellington in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, so, we've got our sort of our primary um, development team, and uh, most of us are based there. And then our founder, Scott Houston, CEO, is, is based in Silicon Valley. We have a salesperson in uh, Seattle as well. So Starting to spread out, spread out wings. <laughs> sure. Uh, one of the more impressive things is the, the demo that I sent yesterday and the developer keynote. Yeah. Um, so maybe we can talk through uh, if you want to run us through that. Yeah. So um, actually, there's a, there's a quite a cool story of, uh, of how the green button came to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's yeah, that and, uh, and then we'll go to the keynote stuff. Yeah. So our founder, um, Scott Houston, was the CTO of Weta when the, doing the Lord of the Rings. And uh, so, Philly. Demanding job, I'd, I'd imagine. <laughs> sure. And, uh, and so it was the Return of the King, the, the final movie in the trilogy, and, and Peter Jackson had called a special meeting to review some of the latest scenes, and he pulled up these low res drafts of uh, the Battle of Palomar Fields, where you've got the Riders of Rohan charging down the hill to meet the orcs in front of the city of Minas Tirith. And, uh, and Scott sort of jawed at the floor because <laughs> the data <laughs> know what's involved. Yeah, exactly. And the, the data centers were already running at full capacity, and, and so they're like, how are we going to do this stuff? Because you know, in those frames, each of the characters is actually generated and rendered and then placed on that battlefield. And so to just to render a simple frame was like you know days of work. Right. Yeah. And uh, and so they they had the option. Well, I guess the only option they had was to build a new data center. Yeah. Which they did in the, in the in ten days effort. And they had IBM put the new blade servers on private jet and whisked them to Wellington. <laughs> So the largest customer of theirs at the time, and yeah. had a helicopter making jobs to the side every day and just madness. And, um, and so the, yeah, 10 days, which is incredible, and uh, got the movie out in time. And, um, and, uh, but after that, you know, there was all the spare capacity lying around there. Right. Didn't, didn't need any longer. And you've had all the investment in that. Obviously, you buy it up front and then you live with it. Yeah, that's what you do, like sell it off. It was less than, you know, 10, uh, less than 10 months worth. So, you're right. <laughs> Um, yeah, for less than two months' work, you know, five million dollars they spent on that thing, and, wow. and so um, Scott left Weta and, and um, started a joint venture, New Zealand Supercomputer Centre, and, and marketed that on-demand capacity for um, businesses in New Zealand and Australia. So you clearly, seeing that wasn't you know an isolated case, that other people are going to have that same problem. That yeah, saw. yeah, I mean, we, we see that exact same example happen, you know, every day for users around the world. You know, maybe sometimes. In a Slightly smaller, sure. Uh, <laughs> smaller case, but um, and, and yeah, so it was really running that New Zealand Supercomputer Centre and, and seeing the you know there were big jobs that they ran up there, but you know for every large job they ran up there were you know dozens of smaller ones where you know it wasn't economically viable to move all the data out, provision the system, and, and gotcha. get all the job to completion. Yeah, and that's when he came up with the idea of the green button as a way of you know providing that seamless interface to on-demand capacity. And you know, just allow users to, to press a button and have it all magically happen. For so this uh, sits on top of Azure. So, so yeah, this, works, this, yeah, this was running on a Linux-based, um, you know, small thousand-core uh, farm. And so, since the beginning of last year, um, Microsoft and Redmond called us up and said, "Hey, you know, we hear what you're doing on right. and, you know, New Zealand Supercomputer Centre. You want to do a project on, on Azure?" And, and so, since then, we've been working pretty closely with them and uh, we architected the solution. And then, uh, yeah, now it's running on Azure and. But a great list of software partners that we're working with. Awesome. Yeah. So the the task is to to render a three D product, and the demo you gave yesterday was yeah. <laughs> you know you, you might have something that takes thirty minutes on a dedicated machine or, or existing hardware versus you know you got that down to like twenty seconds yeah. on Azure. Yeah. Um, and then the killer piece for me was bringing up you know that just cost us. Twenty cents, or whatever you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was phenomenal because I, I used to develop three D, and so yep. we used to have you know render farms, six machines or something, you know, mm -hmm. just to, to build the small projects that we were working on. Yep. Um, but knowing the times that that takes to output to, to just scale up and scale down, and, and certainly to tap into huge resources for yep, yep. for twenty seconds and then only pay minimal, that's just huge. Yeah, yeah. and so you obviously have customers that are. Using that right now? Or? Yeah, so we're, we're beta testing at the moment with a reasonably large number of um, studios, some big and some small ones. Sure. Um, and yeah, we're having a, a lot of success with them. Uh, you know, the solution really resonates with all of them that we speak to. They're like, you know, this is exactly what we need, you know, because the smaller studios, they have their limited capacity, as you mentioned, and yeah. they 
bid on the project, they get the work, and then they can't build any more work because yeah. that's tied them up. So, sure. so it gives them so much more flexibility and, and sort of the, the confidence that they can, you know, go out, get the work, and, and you know, push the boundaries a bit more, and there'll be this extra capacity when they need it. Uh, and I think you know, for that sort of demand spiky um, need, then the, the, it is extremely cost effective you know, compared to having idle hardware sitting there you know, sure. being utilised 20 30 percent of the time. Yeah, and so in terms of how it's structured on Azure, is that servers spread all over the world, or is that because uh, we and I'm imagining New Zealand's the same as Australia. There's no Azure server sitting sitting there yet. Yeah, that's it's right. uh, Asia Pacific or America to, to have those. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we, we primarily, most of our customers are based in the US, but they are spread all over 77 countries actually. So, nice. um, But we do predominantly deploy in the, in the US, but we do spread it around, have other deployments elsewhere, depending on um, the customer and uh, what uh, I guess software we're running up in that deployment. Um, and we're, we're developing some technology now where the, um, the, our service will just automatically just detect the closest deployment for right. you and, and route you to that data center. Clearly they're going to be the fastest transmitting you back down as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So that's, that's quite key is you know, trying to minimize those upload and, and download times for customers. When you're talking the size of files, it's... Uh, yeah, it can be yeah, different different files can get pretty yeah, massive. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we've done uh, other projects with, with Pixar. You mentioned Lord of the Rings, but... Um, uh, Toy Story and Cars and movies like that. I'm sure yeah. that, you know people are familiar with. And uh, I'd heard Shrek and you know stuff like that it takes a lot of you yeah. Know, like they hit render basically on the project done and then wait. You know, used to wait three months for something to yeah. to 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 end up as a final movie. So yeah, hopefully it comes out right. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah I should probably clear one thing up because you know Pixar sort of got two faces. You know, they were an animation studio themselves. You know, Cars and Toy Story. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned, but they're also the providers of the software render man and they sell that to other studios and yep. to competing studios and, and gotcha. so they've sort of got to wear those two faces. So we, we interact with them more as the software vendor of render man yep. um, and then we, you know, we've partnership with them and selling that to other studios out there in the world. Um, and so we, we don't actually, you know, Pixar have their own data centre that they use for their rendering. Sure. Yep. Um, and they may actually come to us and say, hey, we need some help yep. rendering this. But at the moment it's, it's really targeted on, on the other studios out there. Um, and Pixar see a real opportunity to use this to tap into um, you know, a whole new market where uh, they don't typically use Render Man, you know, yeah. small to medium sized studios where um, it's a little bit cost prohibitive uh, and just the complexities involved are sometimes a little bit too overwhelming. Um, but with this solution, it really dumps it down and makes it a lot more cost effective. So they're hoping to completely expand the market that they operate in. Yeah. But then we're also looking to move up the food chain to the larger studios as well. Sure. Um, yeah. but, but those guys have you know massive complex pipelines that, and their requirements are often quite <laughs> specialised. So <laughs> no doubt, that, so it's a longer tail. Yeah. Is the application of it just in the three D area, or there's other uh, other avenues you see? Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, the green button we, we target five um, primary vertical markets. Um, you know, digital media obviously, and you know, architectural design work and right. CAD modelling as well within the sort of digital media space. Uh, then there's engineering for computational fluid dynamics, so you know, design right. of one yeah, formula one car. Sure. That's what you have. <laughs> um, and then, you know, financial services for, um, you know, risk modelling, you know, using Monte Carlo type simulations, uh, oil and gas for 3D seismic imaging, and biotech for DNA sequencing. As well. Some of the biggest data sets in the world. You know. yeah. yeah, the oil and gas guys, you know, multiple terabytes. So, mm. But, it, you know, it's anywhere where there's that compute intensive workload uh, yeah. that we can sort of, you know, easily offload to the cloud. Um, awesome. So the name Green Button, can you explain that? Like, yeah, like it's related to Hit Go and it's Green Button. <laughs> I think that's essentially yeah, yeah. really, you know, about, I don't know if it started out as a red button, but you know, no one wanted to push it. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. so, you know, that's something uh, Scott, our uh, visionary leader, dreamed up. And <laughs> I think people quite like it. You know, oh, it's, they like yeah, it. it's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Easy, so, simple. Yeah. Exactly. Is there anything else you want to tell the audience about what they should, uh, if they want to get more information, where they should go? Yeah, well, I guess if you know if anyone has any compute intensive workloads, as I say, you know it's applicable to anything, and, and we have a uh, software development kit that uh, anyone can pick up and, and use to awesome. uh, enable their stuff pretty easily to run in the cloud. Um, and the other thing we do is we actually it's quite a unique part of our business model is we partner with the uh, software vendors that we work with, like Pixar, and share the revenue with them. So oh, it's interesting. A, yeah, so yeah. it represents a sort of a new revenue stream for them rather than you know cannibalizing their. Sure. Uh, licensing model that they have, yeah, and so uh, so that 
you know, the soccer event is find that extremely attractive and you know, our approach is very low risk and, and sort of very light touch, you know, the, a lot of them have, you know, the desktop applications that their customers live in and so, you know, we want to keep those and let the customer just be able to, you know, access the cloud resources when they need to. Fantastic. Uh, Alright, well, we might leave it there. Thanks very much for cool. your time, Dave. Thanks, Jason. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Cheers.